Okay. Uh, from this expression, you can see that the, the, the three assumptions have been uh, well accommodated. Uh, the uh, posterior probability or the best estimation about the, the, the position the robot has taken up to time k uh, has been expressed like this. Mathematically, this is fine. But if you wish to implement this, so in order to uh, help a robot self-navigate, uh, this is a nasty expression. Uh, if you just consider, suppose this were uh, normally distributed, this is also normally distributed, this, the multiplication of this will yield a very complex uh, probability distribution. For example, the, the distribution, okay, this is the position of x, so the distribution might be like this. If the distribution is like this, uh, taking samples from this distribution in order to uh, make use of the uh, expression for a practical purpose is very difficult. Because unless you have the theoretical uh, curve, uh, getting samples from this population uh, is difficult. But what we can do is we can take advantage of important sampling Suppose we have a, a, a sample which is rather uh, uh, simple, for example, if we can use this type of sample. So this is our P, the posterior probability for this one. Uh, but if we have another more uh, modest uh, probability distribution, we can take advantage of important sampling to uh, map the, the, the population on, on this curve and using this curve to pick a uh, representative uh, sample. This is what we call uh, important uh, sampling. Let's suppose important sampling is based on uh, Monte Carlo uh, approximation. I will uh, briefly discuss uh, both important sampling and Monte Carlo uh, approximation. Suppose we have a function f of x. This x being a, a, a random uh, variable. Okay. Suppose we have this random variable x whose uh, behavior can only be expressed uh, in a probabilistic sense and for that suppose we have this probability distribution representing the, the distribution of x and this is some function f, any uh, good old uh, function. Now we wish to find the f of x. If we have, uh, we wish to determine the expected value of this uh, function. Of course, we have, what we have to do is uh, we have to integrate f of x, p of x, dx. Right? This is how we express the mean of uh, a function involving the random variable x. This is the function, the probability of x uh, for all uh, probabilities. Uh, of course, based on this, uh, uh, as I said, uh, getting, uh, if the, the, the probability density function is a complex uh, function, uh, we cannot take advantage of uh, Monte Carlo uh, approximation. The Monte Carlo approximation says if we have large samples representing this, this complex function, if we have large samples, Let's say large enough okay if we have large samples representing the the, 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 the whole curve which is called the, the population then using the Monte Carlo approximation we can describe this as uh, f of x i like this, the, the different uh, the, the, the different samples taken, we, we put this, uh, the value, uh, we have n samples, so i, n from 1 up to n, we can describe the, the mean uh, like this. But the problem is, how can we get representative samples, these samples, if the curve is really uh, complex? 
So we have to use uh, important uh, sampling. Uh, the idea of Monte Carlo approximation comes from this one. Suppose we have we have this nasty nasty curve, and we wanted to determine the, the area of this curve. Okay, let's call it I. Because the curve is really complex, we may not be able to do that. But what we can do, we can define, or we can pick a well-defined uh, rectangle, for example. So the rectangle here has area of AR. And we know that we can uh, uh, easily uh, determine the area of this rectangle. The Monte Carlo approximation defines a common space for them. Taking a very large samples, large uh, amount of samples, and using a uniform distribution, for example, we can put arbitrary samples. Okay, we can use, uh, put arbitrary samples, beginning from here, arbitrary. Only the sample should be really, really large. Now we can count how many of them fall here and how many of them fall here. Because the process, this process is uniform for both of them or it works under the same condition. Now the, the, the sample that fall here in is Ni and the sample that fall here is Ni. We can describe as A R over a, a i. This one we can count based on how often they fall under this. So the a i here can be expressed i n i over n r times n i. So by so doing, we can approximate the area of this irregular, irregular region. This is how the Monte Carlo uh, approach uh, works. Suppose this is our f of x. Okay. Now we have to determine another function which is well behaved, easy to determine, and then use the, the, the proportion to determine the area of the irregular uh, region. So important sampling, coming back to this one, says So important sampling, the, the, the mean of this function, which I express as f of x, p of x, dx. Now I can introduce another probability distribution, which is easy to determine. For example, I call that q of x. This q of x is a p of f distribution function which is easy to determine or from which I can express uh, or extract representative sums. It could be a uniform distribution, it could be normal distribution, it could be any other distribution which is relatively easy to manage. But there has to be certain similarities between q of x and this p of x. So now I can rewrite this one as f of x, q of x, q of x, q of x, q of x. So this is, this was with respect to p, remember, so let's call it p. Now this, we call it with respect to k. This is just one. Qx divided by Qx is just one. The difference is the following. Now we can describe the expected uh, value in terms of Q instead of P. So what I do is the following. This is F of X, Q of X, P of X times Q of X dx. 
Now my probability distribution is this one, no longer this one. This is just another old function. It has become another old function. So now I, what I am trying to do is, I am trying to express the, the mean of this function. You can call it g of x. g of x times q of x, g of x is the mean of g of x. But this is the same as this one. So the mean of f of x and the mean of q of x are just the same. But this is done with respect to q of x, whereas this is done with respect to p of x. This is the, the advantage of important sampling. And this one you see here, f of x, so I can write this one, I can rewrite this one as integration p of x q of x, f of x, and q of x, q of x. And I can write this as the weight. I can write this as w of x times f of x, q of x, q of x. I'm just manipulating numbers, but in doing so now, I have shift my probability space from p of x to q of x and from q of x i can easily take samples once i have this function i can take some representative samples and then put the samples here and then do the calculation so here remember now using monte carlo approximation once we have this one you see here i can now sample with respect to q of x so this is written f of x can be described as i 1 over n, i running from 1 up to n, of now here I have w of x i times f of x i. This is how I can approximate the mean of this f of i. The, 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 the significance should be very clear from the very outset. The significance is the following. In order to calculate the mean, the mean of in order to calculate the mean of f of x, I can use Monte Carlo approximation. But to do Monte Carlo, I need to have samples to, to, to uh, put it in, in this and calculate the value. And then R and divide it by n. I need to get samples. The samples to get I need a probability density function. If the probability density function is complex, I cannot get representative samples. So I can use important sampling to simplify the task of getting representative samples. So for that, I use importance sampling. Important sampling does the following. I just can't, you know, multiply this term these two terms with a dummy term, q of x divided by q of x. But the good thing here is, I choose q of x, knowing that I can repress, I can select representative samples which represent q of x. So by now manipulating the or rearranging terms, I can describe now the 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 the, the mean of f of x as p of x over q of x times f of x. Q of x. Now I leave f of x as it is, but take the samples using q and call this the weight function, the weight by which I scale f of x. And then all the samples are now taken from q of x, and then I can express f of x, the, the mean of f of x using Monte Carlo approximation and this scaling function. Now for us, Imagine this in our posterior probability. Okay, this is our posterior probability. So we can describe the posterior probability like this. But for that, we need to have this weight. So now, in the subsequent uh, 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 discussion, we're going to see how we can define 
this wave. This wave is nothing but this one. You see, this is the posterior probability, and this is the, the, the conditioning probability. Not in terms of probability, but the conditioning probability uh, density means a probability distribution from which I can easily extract representative samples. Okay? So remember, this was where we are. You see? This is where we are. This is the, the, probab the, the posterior probability representing the, 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 the positions, all the positions the robot take after time k, beginning from an initial position. And we said that this is a nasty expression. So the question is, is it possible to simplify this one? Okay, to simplify this one, we're going to use importance sampling. So the weight we assign for time k can be described the probability of xi. We are going to take now i samples. Remember, uh, in, in our summation here, you see, we need to have i samples uh, or n samples, and each uh, entry is xi. So the, 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 the weight we are assigned for the k's iteration is from 0 to k given dk divided by a certain q which resembles this one. So this is the weight. I pick this q to make to the, the sampling of the posterior probability easier. So I'm going to show you how we can pick this Q in a, in a simpler uh, way. Remember that, now I'm going to ask the following question. Is there a simple way possibly recursive to determine the WK? That means can I describe WK in terms of WK minus 1 times a certain term. That means doing things iteratively or recursively always simplifies the computation cost or the, the computation complexity. So if I can somehow express WK in terms of WK minus 1, then that means I can take advantage of all the knowledge I brought from from the past to simplify the, the computation for time k. So the answer is yes. And now we're going to de describe this in in, in, in more uh, expressive way. So WK we said in the posterior probability sample here, the samples, these samples are not taken from P, so, uh, uh, but from, from Q. Uh, given the k, q x0 to k, k. Now I can describe this one using base step. 
base theorem says that this is the from now onwards we are not going to bother with the, with the normalization factor. Okay, the normalization factor is there under normal circumstances to make sure that the summation of all probabilities is one. Here we use probabilities not to make sure that the summation is one, but to compare the, the position with the highest probability is supposed to be the position of the robot. So for now, for us, the probability terms are used to make comparisons or to select the best position. So I will drop the, the normalization factor. So for this one, this is probability of dk given xi from 0 to k times probability of xi 0 to k. This is the, the, the base expression for this one. Okay, the posterior probability described in terms of the uh, likelihood probability and the initial probability. And this one, I can describe as, you see this runs from 0 to, uh, to uh, k, so I will describe this as xk, x 0 to k minus 1, given dk minus 1. I just distributed this, this is a joint uh, probability, so I just described it up to k minus 1 and uh, k. Okay, now look, this dk, dk, remember, dk, we have said is y1, y2, yk minus 1, yk. x, 0 to k. If we just add i, it's just the, the, the i sample. So this one is x1, x2, xk minus 1, xk. So we can put just the i's. The samples taken from, from this state, the samples taken from the second state, the, samples, the n samples altogether, remember. From each state, we take uh, n samples. So that means this one, you see this point here, we can describe it as probability of yk given xk times probability of dk minus 1 given xk minus 1. This one we can't distribute based on the assumption of the, 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 the Markovian uh, process and uh, the fact that the measurement we take at time k depends only on state k and nothing else. Okay, so the measurement we take at yk depends on only on xk and nothing else. And this one we can describe as probability of here xk given xk minus 1 Right? Times probability of x 0 to k minus 1. We describe it like this. And now we, for this one q, we can describe this as. Uh, x k given x 0 to k minus 1 okay I just condition it and dk minus 1 times because this is a joint density function I'm going to describe it as a conditional uh, probability uh, function. So this is probability of xi 0 to k minus 1 given d k minus 1. Okay? Now look. This is measurement.
this is measurement. You see here, dk minus 1 divided by xk minus 1. Uh, dk minus 1, xk minus 1 times here x, x0 to k minus 1, sorry. This is x0 to k minus 1. So x0 to k minus 1, this, this two you see here. This is the, the base expression for x0 to k minus 1. Okay, so this is uh, the transition. This is a transition. So now we collect like terms together. Now we're going to collect like terms. Okay, now we're going to collect like terms. This term, as I told you, this, the probability of dk minus 1 given x0 to k minus 1 times probability of x0 to k minus 1, this is the posterior probability. So we begin with this one. The weight we assign for the case uh, time is from this one, dk minus 1, this one, this is the probability of x0 to k minus 1 given dk minus 1. This is what we have. Then we have the measurement here, probability of yk given xk. And we have the transition, probability of xk given xk minus 1. Okay, below. Here we have probability of x0 to k minus 1. This is q, sorry, this is q. Because we are talking in terms of q, I am uh, distributing q here. So this has to be q. So this is q, 0 to k minus 1. q, x0 to k minus 1, given dk minus 1. We have to put always the, the indices here because we are talking about samples, remember. The I sample, the I samples times we have this term, Q XK given this term here, you see XK XK is just uh, dependent on k minus 1, not all on the other one. So x, k minus 1. But we have this term analysis. dk minus 1. This term, you see, this is the past. The, the weight we assign for the past iteration for k minus 1. You see p over q up to k, dk, dk, k. 
This one is the new KMI, the weight we assign or calculate it for the eyes, uh, the K minus one sample. So WK is WK minus one times the measurement here, probability of YK given XK times the the the, the transition XK minus one divided by this Q. XKI given XK minus 1 DK minus. So you see that to do the Monte Carlo approximation, we can do iterative. Iterative. The way we are assigned for the case instance depends on the weight we have assigned for the K minus 1, but with this step. Measurement, transition, and some normalization. But remember, we have said we choose K. Okay? Remember, we choose Q. We choose Q in such a way that it is simple for us to sample it. Now suppose now this here, xk given xk minus 1, dk minus 1. You see, k has some transition thing. It's a transition probability. Suppose I choose q to be this one p xk given xk minus 1. Suppose I choose it like this. So the weight we assign becomes really simple. K minus 1, probability of YK given XK. This is the handsome property of particle filter and importance sampling. This is called sequential importance sampling. Very simple. So the weight we assign is described by the, the previous way, but refreshed or updated by the measurement we get. So from now onwards, now we can describe the posterior probability in terms of, now the posterior probability the posterior probability for So the posterior probability to k given d k is described as the summation of the summation of of the n. W i sigma x i minus uh, x minus uh, sorry sorry W k this sigma is a Dirac function. The sigma is a Dirac function having a value of 1 as x case. Okay? The Dirac function, this is sigma, let's say 1, 2, 3, k, k minus 1. So this one is x minus 1. This is Dirac x minus k. 
and so on. And for each case, we assign the appropriate weight. Okay? So the posterior probability is described by this expression, and the weight is also expressed by, by this one. This is the end of our lecture for particle filter and uh, thank you very much for your, your attendance and I'm sorry that it has taken such a long, uh, long lecture to, to grasp but I hope you have enjoyed it and see you next time.